Hey, Flimsy Lunch Tray here, and welcome to World of Warships for our play-by-play -play analysis with the t new Tier 9 Pan American Brawling Battleship, the Los Andes, here on Crash Zone Alpha in Domination Mode. And so what I want to do here um, in starting off is explaining a little bit, one is just briefly about the play-by-play -play analysis, and then explaining typically what happens on this map in Crash Zone Alpha. So... The play-by-play -play analysis is, if you're new to this, uh, I try to do these videos from time to time, where I'm literally just explaining my decision-making process, play-by-play. Uh, uh, -play. And then with this map, uh, I decide uh, with, with Clan Commander Doom, hey, let's just go push A, uh, let's take A, and then we'll go from there. Um, typically, what happens in Crash Zone Alpha, because um, there's also this mindset of how do you play the map that you're on, there tends to be uh, the teams will stagnate, at certain points, uh, usually be behind A and C. Um, and then that's one factor that can happen. And then the other factor that can happen is that, let's say uh, we, our team all goes down to A, even the majority of teams going to A, we don't cap A, enemy team cap C, then pushes down in on us or vice versa. Um, usually A or C will typically fall uh, to the enemy team and you on the flank and then the map control shifts kind of from this diagonal of like let's say g uh j1 to a10 more to like an a1 to j10 and um, can happen quite frequently or you just your team or enemy team just completely loses map control altogether so the goal here is we're going to push down to a uh, we're going to flip it and then we're going to immediately push from a and maybe we'll go north up to 2-3 line or we're we are going to simply um, push right up to b um, so that's kind of the thought process things going on. What I get quite frustrated with as we're going to take a, a salvo here on the Iparanga, and I forgot I had high explosive loaded, but it, it's okay. Like, he's going broadside, and I was, that's what I was waiting for, and we'll get a double fire, but he'll DCP. Typically, what annoys me uh, when the, your team uh, will spawn on this side of the map, um, it's it can be a good thing and a bad thing. It just depends. Um, C10 and D10... Uh, there, for some reason, there's a magnetic field there, and players go to those two squares and they get stuck, and they can never get out of it. Um, like not recognizing, hey, the enemy team has a strong presence up here at sea. We need to go ahead and start kiting south, um, because ultimately we're not going to be able to keep our position here. We're not going to be able to keep the cap. That's usually what happens at C10 and D10. So I'm not really interested in playing into that as the CV spotting is really harassing us here and making it difficult for us to get to A cap because we're having to angle out. And then I ended up slowing down and I shouldn't have slowed down because then I take a 9k salvo there. That was a mistake. I should have just kept going. And I think that is a decision that's going to haunt me uh, at the uh, towards the end of this battle because I took unnecessary damage there. And you'll see what I mean. There's a couple things we can talk about with that as well. So we, uh, our team has taken C, great, um, but now it's kind of like they need to shift maybe thinking more about a kiting aspect that now that they have map control um, because that will be a pain there. So enough with the map dynamics and stuff like that. Let me get more into uh, what's happening and I'm going to unfold here at the cap. So you can see on the mini map, it's going to inform our play by play here. Um, so um, I will, I'm already typing in chat. I'm trying to be a helpful player. Like you guys will need to kite C. Um, there's more battleships that are pushing up from the D line uh, up towards C, and they're going to end up getting boxed in there um, and not survive, right? So we focus on the sub. Uh, I don't like how they buffed submarines and they buffed their turning circle radius. If I remember, that was another buff they did lately for subs because then they just end up, you know, making that ridiculous type of turning uh, circle radius there. So we're not going to get the first blood. Uh, our friendly Bismarck is. Regardless, some reads dead. And you can see uh, the enemy battleships, the enemy Los Andes, which we're going to see at the, throughout the end of this, of this entire battle. Um, and then the, I think it's a tier 9 Soviet um, battle, it's a pan, a pan Asian like Soviet battleship. They're going to kite and they're going to run up the 1 2 line. So they actually they make the right play here um, in uh, running away from us uh, early on where our team decides too late because you can already see it's actually already too late for our two teammates in d10 because they're effectively boxed in um, because they can't go north and if they go south they're going to be showing complete broadside to the battleship so they're kind of stuck there that's kind of what i mean by the magnet thing you get caught in it 
and then players just can't get out of it as there goes the Azuma as well. So North flank has collapsed insanely fast. We're not even within uh, five minutes of the battle unfolding. So I immediately decide, okay, let me get a heal off. I wanna keep focusing, uh, even if, if I can only get small chip damage on the uh, Soviet uh, or Pan, Pan Asian battleship, excuse me, uh, I need to try to help my team as much as possible um, in getting him lower so that eff effectively our team can kill him. Those two battleships are also doing really well together because they're bolstering their AA if our CV tries to go for them. So it's a smart play uh, for them on their part. So uh, we're gonna have teammates that are gonna be moving uh, up the two, three line. Now it's important in this type of situation that they move uh, uh, quickly. Um, I'm also noticing now on the mini map that we have a Massachusetts and B, which sucks because he's gonna be taking a lot of focus fire you can see he's, he's full of health now, but that Iparenga that's just now died, um, he's going to be taking the full attention of the enemy team from C. And so I'm like, okay, maybe he's got a minute, maybe two minutes if we're lucky uh, of him being alive. So I'm still um, being mindful here that I still want to add and uh, that I'm making the decision to keep focusing uh, that battleship. Uh, I don't really want to shoot the Los Andes right now, uh, as even though I'm paying attention to him. I want to turn out and kite the salvo. And uh, enemy team is probably they're going to push down into B, but they're also probably going to push down ar um, around on the 8, 9, 10 line. So you can see Massachusetts is less than half health now, dying quickly. Uh, he's going to get a lot of focus from the enemy CV. It's not great for him. But I want to go ahead and get set up in a position where I'm going to kite. So I talked about when I, the, the ship the other day, I said often, you know, it, I feel like the play style of the ship is just you let the enemy team push into you because it can be quite... You can lose a lot of hit points fast if you overextend yourself and push into the enemy team. And there's a lot of enemy team here at uh, North. So if you saw my veteran player guide video the other day, uh, I talked about uh, Hornet's Nest uh, concept, about um, uh, the classic throw. And so essentially, it's a Hornet's Nest up to sea. Uh, so we don't want to push into the Hornet's Nest because it won't be good for us. So it is nice, we do have our Musashi uh, back down here behind us, so he'll have those um, more accurate-ish, uh, hard-hitting 460 millimeter guns. Um, we can also use him if we need to try to let him take uh, some damage for us, if we need to kind of fall back behind him. But I don't want to be uh, too much in a hurry. As you see me now, I'm going to start playing with my throttle. I'm going to be slowing down, because I want to try to keep the Amagi within my uh, secondary range. Uh, now that my secondaries are working him over, I'm going to go ahead and press the F key, um, improving my secondary damage, decreasing um, uh, or improving the accuracy um, and the reload time, right? Improving the reload time um, and descending them out to 14.4 kilometers. So we're going to sit here. You're going to see me accelerate, um, deaccelerate. With having the propulsion mod built in, uh, it's super helpful um, here in this type of situation uh, because we can keep the enemy guessing. And we're actually going to get a lot of potential damage this game as well. We're all, almost at 1.2 million potential damage now, so keep watching that. It's going to tick even uh, much higher than this. Um, and I'm like, oh, I don't think I'm going to get my guns reloaded in time. But then the Amagi, uh, he ends up grounding there. So he actually is going to be possible for us to get a, a broadside AP salvo into him. So I turn to get my forward guns off. And I would like to try to focus him as much as possible. Um, to get him killed, so then now he's dead. And now I can shift my focus and I can angle a bit better towards the enemy Iparanga and Turpits that are coming down. Uh, our Enterprise uh, spots the Oland. So we're gonna uh, set the secondary focus on the Oland. Um, I'm also gonna again uh, accelerate a little bit more again. I'm kinda wanting to try to Focus my secondaries on an enemy ship at a time. You know, right now with the extended out, both the Oland and the um, can't see which one it is. Iparenga are within secondary range for now, uh, so now I'm going to flip them back to Iparenga. Um, so we want to just kind of keep uh, our focus on certain ships and trying to get them knocked out because kills now are becoming really important. You can see when I was talking about how the map control can shift from J. Uh, 10 to or j1 to a10 it's now flipped to that a1 uh, to j10 rcv i've noticed he's not moving yet 
Um, that's one of the more frustrating things I often get frustrated about CV players. You have all the time to be looking at the minimap when you're flying into your targets. If, you're, if the flank's collapsed and you haven't moved, you need to be moving. So he's going to lose hit points uh, over not being able to move so quickly. So I'm trying to, you know, hey, get back, pinging on the map. This is probably the route you should go as we lose the Bismarck. Uh, we see the Oland again. Oland also gets repair parties, so it's going to be difficult to try to take him down. I would like, to, I'd much rather like to focus my main battery in bringing down these uh, battleships uh, more and making more manageable. So I'm taking less hit points, but I know if I can get rid of that Oland, it'll probably be effective uh, long term here. But we missed that whole Olin salvo. Uh, we take two fires, so now we're going to utilize our damage control party. And having the damage control party mod 1 means our action time has gone from 20 to 28 seconds. It's a lot more helpful um, in trying to manage uh, our health. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to focus the Schroeder. Get rid of him. Anything I can do to lessen um, and kill low hit point targets to help me long term is going to be really helpful here. I don't want to be too idle and just constantly sitting in one position. You know, the secondaries coming in on me, other enemy uh, shots as well. Uh, now we have the turpits. We have an Alaska back there who's slinging some shells at us. You can see the rudder shift is helping us there because uh, when we accelerate, I'm not trying to just accelerate in a straight line, so to speak. But if I can kind of wiggle uh, and move around in various ways, there's the other enemy Alaska. Um, we're about to use our funny button again. And now the cool thing here is that you actually have good secondary uh, firing angles. So I don't have to turn very much to begin to get my secondaries, not only firing on the turpits there, um, but also on the uh, enemy Alaska. Uh, or in this case, you can see Owen's coming back in, so I'm going to focus him again. Uh, but we are, uh, we already got a heal off. And now, <laughs> once this heal wraps up, we have no heals left. So this is where I was talking about the upgrade commander build video the other day of having the emergency repair expert to give us a fifth heal. Uh, or if you had the improved repair party readiness, uh, if we had over 2 million potential damage, we would have uh, prox uh, got the fifth heal <coughs> here as well. Now this is where the Musashi becomes in uh, really clutch for us, um, unfortunately, um, is that he's going to take some attention off of me onto himself. And I feel bad because I feel like I've gotten a little too far south. Maybe I'd rather have been another kilometer or so back. But it's just really difficult because I was taking a lot of punishment there because, you know, already 2.3 million potential damage. Uh, and I want to slow down. I'm shooting, trying to shoot the Alaska and help our Drake, who's getting smacked by the enemy Alaska, and also help Doom. And bringing down the enemy Alaska because I don't want the Alaska to get in behind us into A. Um, it's helpful if we're able to uh, kill him and get rid of him. I'm checking on Doom's health. Um, in the meantime, uh, we still have secondaries firing now the Turpits. He's within secondary range. Uh, I'm now just reversing back in. I don't want to turn broadside out uh, back into the enemy team yet because Alaska's guns hit pretty hard. Um, we see the Oland. I take the pot shot again at him, hoping to finish him off here. We bring him down to 43 hit points. So really frustrating. He's not dead yet. And now CV's going to go spot him again. Uh, in the meantime, the enemy Alaska's gone down. We've not taken down the enemy Turpits. So this battle is still very much touch and go, even though at one point it looked really bad for us. Uh, so I've just asked the CV can spot him. I'm going to bring my swing my main battery guns back around. Um, it's not that I don't have confidence in Enterprise to finish him off with the rockets, but it's just really important that we kill him because <coughs> I don't want to have to deal with his torpedoes uh, if we finish him off. And it's actually our secondaries do end up connecting, and I thank the CV uh, for doing that. And now I'm going to push back in and help with the Musashi. So this is kind of where I feel bad um, because I couldn't tank him more and trying to help take some pressure off of him because he had the Alaska, he had the Turpits, and I think even the other Alaska, and I think he's even taking some shots at range uh, from the enemy North Carolina, and then uh, the CV is also focusing him. So he's just taking a lot of attention right now, uh, unfortunately. So uh, he ends up getting the kill on Alaska there, which is great. Um, I think he's been trying to heal, but it's going to be the enemy CV takes him out with uh, the fire. So that's a three on three. Uh, so I want to get up here into uh, Bravo. You can see the enemy CV actually he ends up stepping on to B because the enemy Los Andes in North Carolina are further back. Um, so I'm thinking also the Enterprise player because he dropped a uh, fighter on me. Uh, I don't have any more heals. All I have now is just my damage control party. As much as I want to get all 12 guns on the 
uh, CV. I can't, I'm gonna have to use my really good rudder shift time to go bow in uh, towards these skip bombers. I'm like, please don't set me on fire. Please don't set me on fire. Crap, it sets me on fire. And then um, I'm like, ah, do I use it now? He might be sending his rocket planes on me. Um, and then like, I'm like, no, okay, let me just go ahead and use it now because I can't heal anything uh, back further at this point because it seems like he's decided he needs to focus on Doom because if he's gonna get away, he has to show broadside to Doom and he's already beginning to show broadside to myself. So uh, now I'm having to swing my gut rear turrets uh, all the way back around because they originally the other way. And I'm wanting to get, uh, I'm hoping to just clap him here because it's really important to get the CV kill here if it's gonna help Doom and I um, and the CV player have a chance. Um, but you can see I'm getting a little bit trolled uh, by dispersion. I can't keep showing my whole um, uh, weird turrets. I need to be able to keep them in sight, which means now my weird turrets have to turn all the way back again. So there is some probably questionable management maybe here with my rear turrets that I wasn't able to effectively keep them on, but I had to go bow onto the CV, right? Um, so I wish I would have been a little bit more mindful perhaps with those rear turrets, but um, just trying to find ways of critiquing myself as well here. So we fired a couple turrets. We've had some long or tall vertical dispersion and I've kind of bracketed him several times. Here again, we bracket him. I'm like, ah, oh, this is so frustrating. I need to kill really bad. But at least for now we're broad uh, or we're bowing to his strike. I'm gonna turn, get the rear turrets off because it's really imperative, I feel, if I'm if we're gonna win this engagement, I need to get the kill on the enemy CV. Now we're getting him reset, he's not getting the caps, that's great. We pick up the Confederate after already having post quarters and general offensive. Uh, I get set on, uh, not sorry, I didn't get set on fire. I go ahead and use my F key consumable um, and I'm like, uh, can I keep uh, seeing him? Can I keep focusing him here or not? Uh, I changed the secondaries back to the CV. North Carolina is showing some broadside. And so what's really important here is there's two decisions I could have made. I could have run and kited out in the open uh, away, which would have been really sucky for me. Um, or I could push in on the island here, which also can be sucky for me. Um, but I can use the island to mitigate the enemy Los Andes, perhaps getting some salvos off onto me, make it difficult for the CV to line up strikes on me that I'm using uh, the island. So he has to think about his uh, approach of attack um, if I'm to utilize this island really well. Because honestly, what all needs to happen, as long as they don't cap and we get one kill, all I have to do is live. Um, that's that's all that has to happen. I have to be cheeky here at the North Carolina. I'm thinking I'm gonna fire my rear turrets off here um, And we get strike team I get set on fire. I have to use the damage control party here um, I don't think the enterprise maybe doesn't have any more fighters at this point It would have been helpful um, as I see now the CV is sending uh, torpedo planes So it's like well, I can't continue to sit here because the CV he now he's gonna want to fly around the side of the island and torpedo me, which is out, uh, ultimately it's gonna push me out uh, from behind the island into the jaws of the enemy uh, battleship. And also you have the enemy CV there. Now the CV plays really smart here that he actually takes the time to fly all the way around the island right in behind me. And as I uh, turn in to avoid, uh, try to uh, bounce that salvo from the enemy Los Andes, what I ultimately end up doing is I end up eating both of these torpedoes, which ends up killing me with 3.4 million potential damage and 219,000 damage all said and done. Now, we can still win as long as our CV player, although he only has a minute 20, if he kills the CV or he kills the enemy Los Andes. Now he decides to go for the Los Andes. I'm not really sure about that. Uh, he makes a mistake though, when he's flying in, he's flying more bow in because he's the Los Andes is between the two islands, right? Um, but the Los Andes, I want to show you what the Los Andes does here. One, he pushes bow in as La Enterprise tries to go out and circle on his side. The Los Andes player uh, just simply uses a great rudder shift and he turns bow into the Enterprise, which isn't going to work. And the Enterprise drops his torpedoes too close. They don't have enough time to arm. And he only would have effectively landed one there. So the Enterprise maybe took a little bit more time. Uh, to try to more properly land up strike that would help them. But at the same time, Los Andes, this is one of the strengths of the ship. It has really great rudder shift time. Now, the thing, if I'm to critique the Los Andes player, if he wants to play smart for the team, 
his team, he should actually, uh, one, he can cap. I mean, I think he wants to stay into the cap, but he seems to have his main battery focus on our CV. Uh, all he has to do is run. As he moves closer to our Enterprise dive bombers, he's shortening the, the travel time for our CV to get to him, or maybe if we had another 10 seconds, uh, as an example, our CV could have gotten the strike off and killed him, because you saw what the Enterprise dive bombers did to the CV, uh, but unfortunately that's not the case. Uh, so we just end up losing here. Just as he makes a drop, it doesn't fully kill the Los Andes, but it was a really close battle. It was still really fun. I quite enjoyed it, even though, unfortunately, it was a loss. So we get General Offensive, Confederate, Strike Team, Close Quarters, High Caliber with the 219,000 damage and three kills, and 25 Defended Ribbons. Um, we only shot down nine uh, of the aircraft. I mean, the Russian CV player, Russian CVs, they don't stick around for multiple strikes, right? It's just the one and done. And I was honestly surprised. I was expecting to see more uh, plane shot down from the enemy CV, um, but not really. Uh, you can see our Enterprise player lost a lot more planes uh, than the Russian CV player um, uh, did. And that's just effectively, you know, how it works where, you know, the Enterprise player might be trying to get multiple strikes off, but he. Um, uh, Russian CV player, that's just not how they play. Uh, we topped the team with over 600 base XP despite being a loss. Uh, we took 126,000 damage with that 3.4 million uh, potential damage all said and done. And the, the few thoughts is, is like, oh, if I hadn't maybe taken that uh, big of damage in the beginning, um, if I had the emergency repair expert skill, um, which would give you the fifth heal, you know, a fifth heal could have actually made the difference there and I would have lived and maybe enough to just kill that enemy Los Andes. If I maybe had the improved repair party, um, once I get a, a fifth heal triggered after taking 2 million potential damage. Um, so there's, just, there's a lot of uh, what ifs in this scenario and that's kind of why I referenced the other day that I feel this ship takes a high point commander, like really 17 points or higher to get the most out of the ship line. If you're like 14 points and under, I feel this sh it could struggle a bit better because this ship really complements a high point skilled commander quite well. So I hope you like this play by play analysis uh, with the Los Andes. I'm looking forward to playing the Libertad, Libertad and giving you more of my thoughts uh, with the ship. So if you liked the video, give a thumbs up. If you didn't, give a thumbs down. Subscribe if you do want to see more. If you're subscribed, thanks so much. I would appreciate it. Thank you to my Patreon supporters. Until next time, take care.